Zero Accounting Software 2023 Bank Reconciliation Month Number Two Deposits. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Bayer Dynamic, not sure if I said that right, but this is the DT770 Pro 250 OHM Studio Reference Closed Back Headphones. I wear headphones basically every day for a large part of the day. They are important to me. Therefore, I've gone through many different kinds of headphones. I've had these for some time and they've worked quite well. They fit over my ears, but I'm still able to put my glasses on under the headphones. The headphones not pinching too tight on the glasses to give me a headache, which is nice. The quality of the padding is good and it has lasted for some time. I've had these for some time now and they haven't gotten all torn up on me or anything like that. I also like that I have a cord when I'm doing my recordings as opposed to a USB centered headphone because that frees up a USB port and I find the USB headphones to be less reliable. They come with an audio jack that looks like this, which is useful for me because that plugs into my audio interface. However, if you want to use the headphones for some other purpose, I believe it's fairly easy to get a converter to other types of audio jacks. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage, going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation. Get great guitars. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Duplicating a couple extra tabs here so we can put two bank reconciliation reports in. One for the prior month we worked on, one for the current month we are working on. Right-clicking and duplicating the tab. We're going to right-click the duplicated tab and duplicate it again. We're going to right click the duplicated tab and duplicate it again. We're going to right click the duplicated tab and duplicate it again. It's a lot of duplications. We're multiplying like crazy, like rabbits over here. Let's go back to the second tab and we're going to go uh, to the accounting drop down. We're going to go into the balance sheet type of report. Go to the tab to the right. Accounting drop down, income statement type of report. I'm looking at a comparative income statement, but you can open the standard one if you'd like. Tab into the right, accounting drop down. Let's open the reports area so we can search for the bank reconciliation, the bank rec. Opening that up, I'm going to tab to the right as it's thinking, and I'm going to open up another bank reconciliation, accounting drop down. Uh, let's go to the reports and type in once again the bank reconciliation uh there we have it all right so now let's do some date formatting here we're going to do the second bank reconciliation for the month of february so we can hit the drop down here i'm going to say this is going to be feb uh first to feb 28 feb 1 feb 28 and then I'm going to say this is going to be the checking account and I'm going to pull the balance in from our bank statement, which is at, uh, this is our Fed bank statement. We'll take a look at it in a second, 101.590.05. So 101.590.05 and then we'll update that. So here we have that information. I'm going to tab to the left. I'm going to open up a bank's reconciliation report for January or create that which is the one we did last time. I'm gonna just, uh, let's say, uh, hit the drop down here and make this Jan 1 to Jan uh, 31. Let's see if I can see the whole thing. All right, and this is gonna be 
checking account, and then this was January's ending balance, 614185. So 61, 61241.85, I think I got that right, updating it. We can check this one because it should be in balance. It is, so it's in balance, that looks good. Let's tab to the left, the income statement looks good properly formatted on the dates, tap into the left balance sheet. Let's make this as of January, dropping it down, customizing it, January in it, and then 31st in it, and then updating it. All right then, so, so this is what we had last time where we had our ending balance here. We reconciled it, dealing with that first bank reconciliation issue, which we won't have in the second bank reconciliation. So this reconciliation should be closer to like our normal kind of bank rec process that we should have going forward. I'm gonna to go to the tab uh, to the right. You can see that we reconciled here for the bank reconciliation. Now we're gonna to go to the tab to the right. This is the second bank reconciliation showing the date of 9577, uh, the amount, 9577906. Nine, this is the balance on our books as of the cutoff date of February. Let's adjust our balance sheet now. Let's see if I could do a side-by-side -side balance sheet so I can see January and February doing a comparative balance sheet. So I'm gonna say, let's uh, lay out and customize this balance sheet comparative let's just say comparative and i'm going to add a column to it and i want to say just a date column and i'm going to say this is feb so this is the month of feb there we have it and so i'm going to update that and so now we've got feb which is at nine five seven seven nine oh six that's showing nine five seven seven nine uh, 06. So we can see once again the construction of our bank reconciliation as we go. Now here's our actual bank statement. The bank statement now having uh, 101 which of course is not the same as what we saw in our books because of timing differences. That's why we're going to have to do a bank reconciliation. What is nice here is that this beginning balance is the same amount as the ending balance of the January bank's bank uh, statement. Therefore, once we have one item in balance, we're not gonna have any of that beginning balance issue going forward. Therefore, the bank reconciliation process will be much easier. All right, let's go to the first tab now, and I'm gonna go to the accounting dropdown. We're gonna go into the bank accounts, and let's go back into our banking data for the checking account Drop down here. Let's go into like, account transactions and noting that in our account transactions on the right we have stuff that happened in february but we don't have any bank data as of yet for the month of february so we're going to go ahead since we're not connected to the bank i'm going to upload the data uh so that so that we have it in the system like zero really wants to to see it so we can get that full feel of having it uh in the system so i'm going to put our information into our uh, Excel worksheet just like we did last time. You could do this. This is similar to us downloading the data from, from the bank or connecting to the bank feeds. So note that when we do that, we don't have the beginning balances here. Uh, what we have is just the activity from the bank statement, but that's all we want. We want the activity because what we're trying to reconcile is from the last beginning balance to this current ending balance. Uh, if you if you want to make your own just for testing out, you can type this into Excel, for example, and then you would need to save it as a uh, CSV file. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to say file and save as browse, and I'm going to save it as a CSV. I'm going to change the file type to a CSV comma delimited file and then save it. So now if I close this out and I check it out over here, now I can see the difference between the, these two. This is the comma delimited one, which I can now add or upload to zero. So let's do that now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back on over here and say manage the account. And I'm gonna say we wanna import a statement. 
import a statement and we're going to say it needs to be these file types so we have a csv file so that one should be uh, good to go so i'm going to say let's upload a file and we're going to say this is feb transactions notice it gives you the last transaction that was entered i think it's trying to help you not to upload duplicate data that's why that's kind of there uh, so you can see what the last transaction was so you can start at the right point if you're downloading this information from your bank uh, february bank transaction boom and there we have it let's go next and then i'm just gonna say the date field is the date field the amount amount payee payee description description reference reference check number check number it looks like everything is is matching up the way it should in terms of the columns from our sheet to what zero has which should be the case because we got our column headings from zero let's go ahead and say next and so i think that looks good so let's go ahead and say complete the import por favor and it should pull that stuff in so now i have if i go to my my reconciliation tab i've got my comparison between the banking information and what we have put in the system and in my bank statement tab i now have the information not just for january but also february that we uploaded into the system or february's on top and then in the account transactions, nothing new is happening here. We already had this in the system. So we didn't actually record anything by uploading that data. We just uploaded it to match what's in the system. Now, if we were constructing our books from the bank data, this would be similar to us connecting to the bank feeds and we wouldn't have anything on our transactions for February, but only these transactions. And then we would, re then we would, we would record our books you know based on that which we'll do in a future course or section we might spend some more time on that now we're just going to do the deposits so we'll do this one at a time i'm just going to match out the deposits over here and then we'll do the checks next time remembering that we're always going to basically go from the bank statement to the books so notice that in our bank statement this number when i'm trying to reconcile is good that one's been cleared because that's our beginning balance no problem now i'm just going to go from our deposits which normally we have a dollar amount and a date that is relevant if you had electronic transfers you may also have bank text or memos that will help you to kind of tie everything out noting that if you deposited everything properly using a proper clearing account you shouldn't have to add things together when doing the bank reconciliation in order to to reconcile if you do that means that your accounting system probably is not optimal and you can need to use a clearing account or you need to figure out a system so that the deposits you make into your checking account are grouped in the same format as the deposits going into the bank possibly being an issue because of intermediary platforms like paypal's like stripes like the credit card company or cash that you're grouping together so you want to come up with a system that we've talked about in prior presentations okay so there's the 34 uh, 70 70 something so <laughs> 34 72 so we put it in the books on uh, uh, this is one that didn't clear in January so that's one I just want to point out over here this in January here this 34 72 was outstanding and now it's clearing in February that doesn't mean this bank reconciliation report it's going to disappear uh, from here it's still outstanding as of the end of January but if I look at this bank reconciliation report I have outstanding receipts here that's it's going to be not outstanding for February so it's going to pull out of this area as a non-outstanding item all right so let's do it and say let's say okay and then if I go back on over here just to note this it's still outstanding as of January, right? It's still the outstanding item, but in February, it has now cleared. So it's not outstanding. It's not a differential factor in February between the, the book balance and the bank balance. Okay, back to the tab to the right, then I can greenify this, greenify this, uh, 12, 1250, 
So back over here, it's easier with two monitors, but whatever, 12, uh, 250, 12, 250, not 12, 1250. <laughs> this one I wrote in February and then it cleared a little bit later. So they cleared in the same month. So I'm going to say, okay, got it. And then greenify and then greenify 450870. Okay. 450870. So there's that one. So we wrote it on the 20th. It cleared on the 23rd. That makes sense. Okay. And then we got seven. Let's see if I can do these at the same time 750 and 400. I mean, it's going to strain my memory. But there's the 750. There's nothing that's tying out to the 750. That's kind of annoying. I would think there should be. But the 400 we have here. So let's pick up the 400. That's good. All right, back on over. 400 has been picked up. Okay. So now we have this 750. So the question is, what is going on, you know, with this 750? Now we could go to the match here and try to see if I can match it up to some other transactions. Let's just get an idea of what's happening when we match it though. If I, if I go up top and say, okay, what do we have here? This is comparing the books and the banks. What I have here is the bank data. So in the bank data, I have the 750, right? I have the 750 that's unreconciled. On the account transactions, this is our book data. This was where it is not here. I'm gonna sort everything so February is on top here. So I'm gonna say, all right, February is on top and then see, okay, what's going on with these deposits? Uh, and, and I can see down here, notice that I have these three items that add up to 750 quite coincidentally, right? I've got 200, uh, three, four, five, six, 750, all unreconciled. So what possibly happened at this point in time is that when, when I recorded the deposits for sales that have happened, uh, or receives of the invoice, I recorded each of them individually, but possibly they hit the bank as one lump sum of 750. Why might that be the case? Possibly because some kind of intermediary processor, the bank, the PayPal's, the stripes, the credit cards of the world, or possibly cash deposits. I grouped the cash together and deposited the three payments I received in one lump sum. That would all result in one lump sum on the bank and three numbers in our account adding to the same amount. Now, again, I can fix that over here and I can say, well, that's not a problem. I can go over here and I can just add those up, but I shouldn't have to, right? I want the bank reconciliation to be as easy as possible. So we'll do that here, we'll add them up. But if you find yourself doing that all the time on the bank reconciliation, your accounting is messed up. What you wanna do is make the accounting such a way that you're just gonna end up with some green buttons over here to click off because everything matches up because you don't have to add up numbers because you're using a clearing account or doing whatever you need to do to tie everything out properly. All right, so to find that match here, I can say, okay, it's on the bank side, it's not on the book side. I'm gonna match it and combine these things together. So I'm gonna say, here's the one. I want this one, this one, and this one which are gonna tie out to uh, the 750. So that should match out. So then I'm gonna scroll down and say, okay, reconcile. And so it pulls that match in place. So if I go back on over, we can say, all right, 750 has been matched out. We're good to go. So that means on the deposit side, uh, we have checked everything off. So if I go back on up, then if I look at the bank statement tab, we've checked off many uh, or all of the deposits in February for the bank statement, because if it's on the bank side, it should be in our book side. And if it's not, we should probably are gonna need to, to enter it in our books. This one, however, we entered in our books in January, but it cleared in February. So we're still able to check it off. If I go to the account transactions over here, then we still may have some deposits that were in February that are unreconciled. And that possibly is okay because those are our outstanding items. So these are going to be the things that are creating our report. If I go to my bank reconciliation reports, and I really like that you can open multiple bank reconciliation reports and, and change them as you go for instructional purposes, that it works quite well for that. But in any case, you, you have the January didn't change 
there's the 340750 uh, here, it's still outstanding, even though that deposit, again, did clear over here in the February statement. So in February, we now have the balance per the books, 9577906 ties out over here on the balance sheet. And then we've got the outstanding payments that we'll talk about next time, less the outstanding receipts, which is that 2260, which I can see down here. There's the 2000. 60 and another 200 these two deposits it looks like have not yet cleared uh and we can double check them to see if they cleared in uh march and if they did then they would be legitimate outstanding items a different from the difference from the bank books to our books as of the cutoff date of february 28th